And we're back to learning to code and this time I'm going to walk you through the 10th course on freecodecamp.org, the responsive web design section. It's a certification project, it's called Triple Page. There's an example right here, let me open it. Looks like this. So we've got an H1, an image with a caption, then an unordered list with some information about the guy and a link. I'm going to make mine about Michael Crichton. It doesn't really matter who it is, we just need an example. And we need an image, and you can find that on Wikipedia usually. So pick one on Wikipedia yourself, and then go over the user story. You can directly type something in, so it's going to be displayed in browser window. But it's a good idea to treat this as a regular project, so let us add the doc type, the HTML tags, and all of this stuff. We don't really need, but you would need it in regular project. Let me add a hat and a body. And we can also add some meta information. We can add the language attribute to our HTML, make it English. Let us add the meta information to make it responsive. So name viewport. And for content, we need the width equal to device width. And we'll set the initial scale to 1.0. Let us add a title. I'll just call it Michael Crichton Triple Page for Rico Camp Certification Project. And we can also link it to our CSS. It's given below right here. So we want to connect them. We later on need our CSS to start it a little bit. So let's put it here, relationship, style sheet. And our href is the styles.css. We will later check if it's correctly linked, but it should be. Now let's go over the user story. We need a main element with an ID of main. And we want to nest all the other elements into it. So this is our main container, you could say. We need an element with an ID of title. So a heading should be good element. Let's use the h1 here. We need an ID of title, like so. Don't forget the closing tag, and we'll add our headline. And here it is, and now we can check if we've linked our CSS correctly. Let me select the h1 and give it a red color to see if it works, and it works. So we've done everything correctly with our link. Let's move on to step three. We need a figure or a div element with an ID of image div. It should be in the main, like everything that we're going to add. You can use a figure like this. And I'm not so sure if we've used it already. 
in FreeCodeCamp, so let me stick to div containers. It doesn't really matter in this case, but it matters that it has the ID of img minus div. Within it, we need an image element. And for source, I'll just right click on this photo on Wikipedia and then I copy the source of this graphic and then I paste it right here. It's okay for this tutorial. You shouldn't do that when you create your own websites as it's basically going to steal a little bit of bandwidth and you never know if these images are copyright protected or anything. But on Wikipedia you're usually fine and it's just an example. So in this case it's okay. Don't forget to add the ID of image to your image element. And we need a caption and it needs to be below our image. Use the fig caption element for that. There's a typo right here, I'm sorry. But it should look like this. And now you can put information inside. I believe it was in 2002. Well, let me check. Yes, it was right. Well, let me copy the entire caption right there and I paste it here. And the caption also needs an ID of img minus caption. It's important to have it correctly spelled, because otherwise you won't get past the tests on FreeCodeCamp. We need an element with an ID of tribute info. You can use another div container for that. Let us put it below our img div container. Tribute minus info as an ID. It needs to contain texture content. So let's get back to Wikipedia. And we'll copy paste something inside of paragraph right here. Let me just copy the first paragraph. That should be fine. Can move on to step seven. We need a link. Let me create a new paragraph for that. And inside, I'll put our anchor tag. Opening and closing tags, don't forget that. And let me just give it a text. And then I reposition our opening anchor tag. So I want only this to be our link. We want to link it to the Wikipedia page, so I copy paste the web address and add it as an href value to our anchor tag. It needs to have an ID of tribute link. And we also need to give it the target attribute with a value of blank. And when you add that to links and you click on your link, it's going to be opened in a new tab. Don't forget the underscore before blank. Let me click on the link and it does work. So we've done that correctly. And we can check bullet point eight. And we are in the CSS now. So let us jump over. We don't need the index for now. Our image, let me select that with this hashtag key. So we are selecting our ID. We need a max width and a height. Let me check the values. Resize responsively. So let me use relative values here, maybe 100% for the max width and height. Now 100% doesn't look good. 
Let me use 200 pixels and see if that works. I'm going to check the smaller tests below. Anyway, what else do we need? We need to center it. Good idea is to use margin for that. I will set it to auto. Let me try targeting the image. We definitely need to set it to display block. So let's do that. I want to have the H1 in center as well, it's not needed. But if we put the image there, it's a good idea to have the H1 there as well. But it looks like I've got a little bit of a problem with my image. I'm pretty sure it becomes clear what it is if I go through all of these smaller tests down below. But there's some issue here. Pretty sure it's just a typo somewhere. So let me go over these. The main is fine with an ID of main. I want to have all of this stuff nested in my main. So let's check it. The IMG div, here it is. And the image, we've got that. IMG caption. We've got that. Tribute info, here it is. And tribute link, we've got that as well. I spelled it correctly. Element with an ID of title, that was our H1. Title should not be empty, it's not. We've got this one, it's the IMG div. A fig caption, once more, we've got that with an IMG caption ID. It's a descendant of the IMG div. It's not empty. Should have an element. With tribute info, we've got that. We've got our link down here. And it has an href value and a target underscore blank. Image should have a display block. We've got that. Ah, but there you go. This was my typo. So I don't want to select an ID of IMG, I want to select the element of IMG, so we don't need this hashtag sign before. So that was my typo. Maxwith was correct, but the hate. We can set it to auto, and that should be fine. We should center it, and we've done so via the margin. So if I get rid of the auto, you can see it's aligned to the left by default and with auto it's centered. Let me run the test and we're good. So once again, I had a little bit of a typo right here. It says IMG. You can select it like this or you can select the ID, but the ID is not IMG, the ID is image. So you have to write it like this. Sometimes it's these smaller mistakes, smaller typos, and it drive you crazy. But in this case, we found it quickly, and everything else was correct. So go over it yourself, and maybe you want to style it, want to give it some more information. But everything I've shown you here is enough to pass this certification project. And if you just want to pass it, do this, and you're good to go. Any example, you have an unordered list, and there's some bold text. So maybe you want to add that to your project. If you do so, it's going to provide you extra training. And you can also add some CSS. For example, style the paragraphs. Let me just go over this as an example. So you could, for example, use the P as a selector, then curly brackets. And maybe we'll use the text align property, put it in center. Change the font family, let's say to Verdana. And we can also make the text a little bit smaller with font size of 12 pixels. 
So if you want to style your website, just go over it and use it as additional training. But in general, this was the 10th course in a responsive web design section on freecocamp.org. Check it out yourself and use my video as a walkthrough if you get stuck. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.